And finally, let's talk about this. Turns out that differentiability is, 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 very, is very similar to the idea of continuity. They have a lot in common. They're different in a lot of ways. A function can be differentiable at a point or it can be non-differentiable, right? Just like a function can be continuous or non-continuous at a point. So the question is, how do we identify uh, the breakdown? How can I tell whether a function fails to be differentiable at a particular point? Um, well, one case is very straightforward. It turns out, in order for a function to be differentiable, it has to be continuous. So, it's our first rule for identifying points where, uh, of, where differentiability fails. So if a function is not continuous, then it's not differential. So for this function here, <coughs> where is this function not differential? Where do I know that it's not differential? Where it's not continuous. Where's this function not continuous? Yeah, so uh, this, is, uh, this is the exact same question. In fact, I think, yeah, this is it. It's the same example we had on the quiz. What has to be true in order for this function to be non-continuous? Well, wherever it's not defined. This function is not defined whenever the denominator goes to zero. And so that means that x can't be equal to plus or minus one. So from that, we can draw the following conclusion. F is not continuous at uh, plus or minus one. Uh, and why? Why is the function not continuous there? What property of continuity has been violated? It's not defined. Uh, and that implies that F is not differentiable at those points. So uh, there is that equivalence, right? Failure of continuity means that the derivative also fails. All right, part B. Square root function. Where's this function not continuous? Zero. It's the one we just talked about. Right? This function here is not continuous at zero. Why? What condition of continuity failed? for the square root function at zero? <coughs> Let's see, Let's remind ourselves. What are the conditions of continuity? Number one, the function must be defined. Is the square root function defined at zero? Yes. Number two, the limit exists. Does the limit exist for the square root function at zero? No. That's what we proved earlier. The limit from the right does exist, and it is equal to the function value, so it's continuous from the right, but it's not continuous from the left because it's not even defined on the left-hand side of the axis, so we can't actually produce the limit value. So this function fails continuity because of the failure of the limit to exist. And that implies that the function is not differentiable. Um, but it turns out we can see that in a whole, whole different way. Because we solved a problem earlier involving the square root function. In fact, we showed exactly what the derivative of the square root function was equal to square root function's derivative ended up being equal to this. 
what do I, what's the problem with this expression? Let's do y prime. So, what's the problem? Same thing. Even if I didn't understand the failure of continuity to work in this case, uh, I could still have verified the failure of differentiability because I already had a formula for this function's derivative. And just similar to the reciprocal function that we looked at, there's a problem here. This function, even though the original radical function is defined as zero, its derivative is not. So here they, uh, no, I didn't have to know that to know that this uh, that differentiability failed here because I already knew that continuity failed. But here's a second way that we can test this. If we actually know the function's derivative, then we can actually just do the simple algebraic test. Under what conditions will this function fail to be defined? In this case, exact same point where continuity failed. So just because we had that at hand, uh, that gives us a slightly different way to make that measure. Okay. So if a function is not continuous, then it's not differentiable. Does the um, inverse work? Right? Or sorry, contrapositive. Right? Um, if a function is continuous, does that guarantee that its derivative will be continuous? So not continuous implies not differentiable, but does it work the other way around? Does continuity imply differentiability? And the answer is no. Like continuity and differentiability are not the same thing. A function can be continuous, but not differentiable. And here's an example of exactly that. Um, the absolute value function. We've already talked about this function. Is this function differentiable? Or sorry, where does it fail to be differentiable? Right. Where does this function fail to be differentiable? Okay, so let's see. How do you want to look at this? Um, okay, let's, let's do the interpretation this way. Um, what does the derivative represent? Slope. Slope of the tangent line. Okay, okay so let's see here. Um, now I'm going to take, uh, I'm going to take this derivative uh, in, uh, according to the two sides. Because if I look at this graph, I can see that there's a change in slope uh, about the point where x is zero. On one side, the slope is positive. On the other side, the slope is negative. So uh, what that tells me is it should make a difference here. If I take the limit as x approaches zero from the right-hand side of this function, the absolute value, what is that going to end up being equal to? Please notice, this is a uh, this side of the graph. It's linear, right? If I'm talking just about the portion of this graph to the right of the origin, it's linear. The derivative represents the slope. So, what's the derivative of this function as I come in from the right-hand side? What's the slope of that line? Hmm? One, right? In fact, we already mentioned this. this the um, the uh, uh, absolute value function is a branch function in disguise. Right? We mentioned this earlier when we were talking about um, uh, branch functions. Uh, I can rewrite the absolute value function in this way. What does the absolute value function do to values of the variable? Well, if it's a positive number, it doesn't change it. It leaves it alone. So this is just going to be equal to x, provided x is greater than or equal to zero. In fact, it really doesn't matter where we apply the equality. Um, but what does it do to negative numbers? How do I account for the change in negative numbers? 
uh, when the absolute value is applied. Hmm? What is it? Value. Not the negative absolute value, the negative of the number. So if x was a negative number to start out with, then its absolute value is going to be negative x. <coughs> because that's how I get rid of the negative. The negative applied to the negative becomes positive. So the absolute value function is itself a branch function in disguise. Uh, the absolute value as I come from the right hand side, I'm coming along this line. And the slope of that line is equal to 1. Okay, what happens if I take approach from the other side of 0? So along this approach, I'm talking about the positive values of x. What happens if I make this approach from the left-hand side? Now I'm talking about the negative values. The derivative represents the slope of the tangent lines. What's that going to be on the left-hand side? Negative 1. Now I'm on this other branch. On the right-hand side, the slope is positive 1. But on the left-hand branch, the slope is negative 1. So that's the slope of the left branch. So, what have I shown? I've shown that the limit... Oh, and by the way... That's not the limit of the absolute value. Right? The, absolute value the limit of the absolute value is zero. Right? That's the limit of the derivative of the absolute value. So this is the limit of x plus h, absolute value, minus the absolute value of x. That's how I compute the derivative. I might replace, uh, take that difference, uh, the difference quotient. Uh, this limit here, same thing. This is the limit of the absolute value of x plus h minus the absolute value of x over h. I'm computing the derivatives there. Okay, so what have I shown? I've shown that the limit applied to the difference quotient from the left is not the same as the limit of the difference quotient as I approach from the right. Okay. And so that means that the big limit doesn't exist. And that means that f prime of zero is undefined. f prime of zero is the value of that limit. This limit fails to exist, so there is no definition for the derivative at zero. So this shows that just because a function is continuous doesn't mean it must be differentiable. Because this function is continuous at zero, but it's not differentiable there. And the reason why is, in fact, uh, geometrically, there's a tip-off to what to expect in these sorts of situations. The problem is uh, this little uh, corner or edge or horn, right? What's happened is there's been an instantaneous change in slope across the point zero. It hasn't been smoothed out. Right? One term that we're going to use for uh, differentiable functions is smoothness. A curve is smooth if its derivative exists. This is not smooth. There's a no transition. There's no smooth transition from that slope of negative 1 on the left to that slope of positive 1 on the right. It's just instantaneous. It just breaks with the actual function itself. Um, oh, in fact, uh, in fact, I can show something else here. Let me show this. Um, we haven't actually talked about this yet. We're going to talk about this next week. I can't remember. Uh, uh, we've shown that we've got the graph of f itself. Right? There's the graph of the absolute value function. What does the graph of the derivative look like? The derivative is a brand new function. Right? The derivative is a function in its own right. So we should be able to graph it. What does the graph of this derivative actually look like? It's a 
branch function. It depends on which side of zero I'm coming from. Um, so this is going to be the uh, derivative of the absolute value function. So here's my um, differential notation. The derivative of the absolute value of x. Um, if x is less than zero, what does this equal? Negative one, right? We just showed that. The limit, here's the limit being applied to the formula. We had obtained that limit by measuring slope. So from the left hand side, equal to one. Uh, if x is greater than zero, what's this equal to? Positive one. It's not defined at zero, we already showed that because the limit uh, from the two directions don't match up. And so I can actually draw this picture of this derivative. Now, where's my excuse? Actually draw the picture of this derivative. What does it look like? Well, to the left of zero is the constant function positive one. It's not defined at zero. So on the left hand side, or right hand side, I've got this. And on the right hand side, at negative one, I've got this. So there's a graph of this function's derivative. Got a big hole at zero, it's got a gap in it, but on either side is constant. So to the right, positive one, to the left, negative one. And uh, I can actually express the uh, failure of differentiability in a brand new way now. Um, F prime fails to be continuous. At zero. That's why the derivative failed. Right? If the derivative exists, then I should see continuity between those <coughs> two branches. Um, that breakdown in continuity, that's an expression of the failure of those two limits to be equal. That's another test for di the differentiability. If the, func if the derivative itself fails to be continuous, there it is. There's that uh, picture of the failure of continuity for the derivative itself. Um, okay, so that tells us one important fact. If it's not continuous, it's not differentiable, but just because it's continuous doesn't mean that it will be differentiable. So again, we have to make that distinction. Uh, but there is a geometric clue to what's going on. Anytime I see one of these corners in the graph of a function, that's a clear sign that differentiability is going to fail. I have to have a smooth transition between slopes. And I don't see that here. That edge is a violation of that, uh, of forcing those two limits to actually come together. Okay, uh, let's get a couple of more examples here. Uh, and, and here's a summary of what I just said. Continuity is a necessary condition. A function must be continuous to be differentiable, but it's not sufficient. A function... Oh, in fact, in fact there's the other part of it. Yeah, continuity is necessary but not sufficient. And uh, if a function is differentiable at a point, then the derivative is continuous there. So differentiability is related to the con continuity of the derivative function. Okay, so let's do a couple more of these. Number one, where does this function fail to be differentiable? Well, is there anywhere where it's not continuous? If, it, if there is a place where it's not continuous, it would have to be at one. So let's check. Uh, so the first thing I'm going to do is check for that. If it fails to be continuous at 1, then I'm done. It can't be differentiable. So let's check. Um, the limit as x approaches 1 from the left-hand side. Uh, what is that going to be? So which branch am I on from the left? Up here. Less than. So from the left-hand side, I'm using the square function. Okay. What's the limit as x approaches 1 from the right? Now I'm on the square root branch. Okay, that's good. So this branch, uh, these two limits actually match up. Uh, and finally, I do have to verify one last thing. Uh, so that that's a confirmation of this part of it. The limit does exist. Is that enough 
to determine that the function is continuous? No. What else do I need to know? I need to know the function value at 1. Uh, so I still need that. Uh, what is f of 1 equal to? Which branch am I on? When I'm at 1? Squared. Yeah, so there. This function is continuous at the point 1 because the left and right limits are the same and they're equal to the function value. Okay, well that did why I wasn't very helpful, right? I was running that test to prove that the function would not end up being differentiable, but that's not sufficient. Uh, it is continuous, so I can't assume that I don't have differentiability. Um, but just because it's continuous doesn't mean it is. So once again, I'm going to have to go a little bit further here and determine uh, what about differentiability. Continuity holds, what about differentiability? Well, it turns out that I've already done all the work that I need to make this identification. We've already computed the derivatives for these two functions. We've computed the, uh, the derivative of the square function. We've computed the derivative of the square root function. So the derivative of this branch function can be done branch-wise. The derivative of f is going to break down into two pieces. On top, uh, or at least uh, for x less than or equal to 1, it's going to be equal to the derivative of the square function, which we just determined to be 2x. On the other side, it's going to be equal to the um, derivative of the square root function, which we determined to be this. So this is something, now of course, if we hadn't already done that work, then we'd have, we'd, there'd still be some stuff to do. Uh, but since we already had that information available to us, uh, and this demonstrates that there is that transition, that the derivative of a branch function can be applied branch-wise. However this function behaves uh, on the part that corresponds to the square function, its derivative follows the same pattern, same for the square root function. And now the question becomes, is the derivative continuous here. The failure of the derivative to be continuous is the failure of the derivative process to be completed. So, is this function continuous at 1? Is it? What's that equal to? 2 what? Yeah, I'm on the top branch, 2x, but x is approaching 1. So that's equal to 2. What's the limit as I approach 1 from the right-hand side? Is that equal to? 1 half. So, is the derivative continuous at 1? No. And that implies that f prime is not differentiable. It's not f, it's not the failure of the continuity of f, it's the failure of the continuity of the derivative. Um, and so again, so what, what would this look like? Right, if I actually uh, were to look at this graphically, uh, what would I see? Uh, is there, a, um, uh, is there a, a geometric tip-off that I, I was going to anticipate here? That failure? Yeah, um, let's see if I can draw this picture here. Uh, so on the one hand, we've got the, uh, uh, so it, uh, the transition here is at the point 1. So here's our transition, here's x equals 1. Uh, the, uh, 
square function is the um, parabola, like so. The um, square root function is the uh, sideways parabola, like so. But these branches now are being squashed out. Uh, the parabola doesn't apply uh, once I pass through uh, the transition point. So that part is going to be scratched away there. And the um, square root function, that's going to be scratched away here. So right here at the transition, they do meet up. Uh, but now I get a different type of behavior right here at this point now this graph is moving on in this direction kind of flattening out a lot flatter slope and right here I had a slope of 2 coming in in this direction so once again there's kind of an edge here kind of a kind of a, um, a horn right here at the transition from one direction I'm approaching a slope of 2 but from the other direction I'm approaching a slope of 1 half so that rapid, that instantaneous change from one slope to the other without that smoothing out process as I go from one graph to the other, uh, that's why this fails. So there's a geometric interpret, there's a geometric uh, tip off that I could have anticipated what was going to happen there. If I could have looked at this graph and seen how those two pieces really don't smooth themselves out as they come together, uh, that's the indication that uh, that was going to fail in some way. Um, and finally, one more, one last one. Here's another branch function, transition between forms, um, zero, x squared. Um, go ahead and draw the picture. Um, what does this look like? What do I see coming in from the left-hand side? Where am I going to be? This line, where is the line located? Yeah, so it's on the x-axis itself. So coming in from the left, I've got this piece. And then at zero, I hit the square function. So I get this. Okay, so that's what this looks like. Uh, right away, I immediately uh, can uh, identify the continuity of the original function. So just from this diagram, uh, and again, you know, all the details, the limit from the left in this case, and the, the limit from the right, both turn out to be equal to zero, which is actually the value of f of zero. So all of these things are the same, left limit, right limit, function value. So there's the continuity. Left and right limits give us the big limit, and then the function value being the same. F is continuous at zero. Um, the question is, is it differentiable? Uh, so I'm going to do the same thing I did before. Uh, I'm going to, well, in fact, uh, yeah, I don't have to do that. Let's, let's do it this way. Um, the limit, uh, let's go ahead and put it back into um, uh, uh, the limit language. All right. Let's look at the derivative's limit as I come in from the left-hand side. What is it going to be equal to here? What is the limit? Represent geometrically slope. slope, slope of the line from the left hand side. I'm coming in a line with a slope of zero. So the left hand limit is equal to zero. Again, any line, the derivative of any line at all is its slope. So I was able, I didn't have to do any algebra, didn't have to do that algebraically. I was able to make that determination because I know geometrically what the derivative represents. So that's the slope of the line, y equals zero. Um, okay, what's the slope from the other side? Um, well, 
Well, from the other side, I'm on this branch. I'm on the branch x squared. Uh, what's the derivative of x squared? 2x. So uh, that's going to be, uh, um, actually this is an x, this is supposed to be h. And actually I do want x to be 0 here, that's what I'm doing. I'm, letting, I'm looking at the point 0. So I'm measuring the slope of this curve at the point where x is 0. But we've already done all the work for this. We've already shown that the derivative of x squared is 2x. So if I'm approaching this point, uh, in fact, that's what I want here also. I want this x to be 0 because that's the point that I'm approaching. But of course, on the left-hand side, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what point I'm approaching along the line because the slope is constant. But along this part of the curve, uh, I'm approaching along the x squared path. We've already shown that the derivative is equal to 2x and the slope of the tangent line at the point is 2 times the point value. So this is also equal to 0. So is this function differentiable at 0? Yes. Here I've shown the left and the right limits are the same. So that proves that the limit as h approaches 0 of the derivative form, and again, this derivative being applied to the two branches independently, I've shown that this limit is equal to zero. So it is defined, and that means that f is differentiable. At the point where x is zero. And so what does that tell me about what's happening here within this graph? Uh, that smoothness is preserved, even though the slope of this line on the left is very different uh, in its entirety from the be slope behavior of this graph on the right. They just happen to be meet, meeting up at the transition point. The graph of the parabola is actually going to zero at that exact point where the zero slope from the line meets it. So there's a smooth transition from the slope of the line to the slope of the parabola. They just happen, things just happen to be balanced out just right. So the line met the parabola at the one point where the two slopes were the same. So once again, uh, it's this idea of continuity, of measuring these two slopes from the two directions, especially for these branch functions. These branch functions are the examples of where continuity holds, but differentiability fails. We looked at a couple of cases where we had discontinuity, uh, had continuity but not differentiability. Here's a case where we're able to preserve both, continuity and differentiability, because the setup just balances itself out. The transition point preserves those two slopes from the two directions in a way that the previous two examples did not. So continuity is preserved, the function is differentiable, or the continuity of the derivative is preserved, so the function is differentiable there. The derivative is defined as a limit, so the failure of the limit is the failure of the derivative, but in this case, the limit was preserved. Okay, so there we go. That's the uh, material that we're going to see on our first test. Uh, everything from our introduction to the limit up through the properties of the derivative and uh, non-differentiability and how it comes about function forms. Okay, so I'll post practice test later on. Uh, I might not get it up tonight. Maybe it might be tomorrow after, tomorrow morning. Um, homework ready to go. Uh, Monday we'll do our, have our last quiz. We'll do our review in our first test one week from today. Okay, have a good weekend. See you next week.